Thamer, Jorge Masvidal. A little clap or a cheer, something, a little something out here. <laughs> a little something. <laughs> Hello, everybody. All right, all right. One half of the main event, a uh, former UFC heavyweight champion, nine victories, win streak in the UFC. Uh, also, I hear Bertie told me one of the best singers at American Top Team, Junior Dos Santos. Bring him up to the stage. And then the other half of the main event in Jacksonville, Florida, also former UFC heavyweight champion, one of the greatest heavyweights of all time, Fariso Verdum to the stage. All right, all right, guys. We'll open it up very soon, guys, to all media here in person, but uh, let's uh, take care of some business. Guys, Friday, September 8th, a historic event live from Jacksonville, Florida, Vistar Veterans Memorial Arena. A historic event, uh, 15 years in the making, historic rematch of two of the greatest heavyweights of all time. But this time, um, Jorge, we are excited about, we're gonna take the gloves off of these two fighters. We've been talking about it. How excited are we? Um, gloves off between Dos Santos and Verdun. <laughs> um, I, I grew up watching these guys, and um, and just knowing when they came in, they were like the next generation of heavyweights. You know, they were big guys. They were athletic. They could wrestle. They could strike. They could do jujitsu. And um, it, they they were like the next wave of the big guy that could really really move. And both of them got sick power, right? So when we were thinking, what's the most violent fight that we could possibly put together? Well, JDS is a free agent. He won't be for long, and so is Verdum. He won't be a free agent for long either. We got to make this happen right now, you know. And that's what we were trying to do: is just get together a fight that people would say, "Holy smokes, I'm going to watch that." You know, no matter if you've been a new fan of the game or 20 years in the game, there's no way you're not watching this fight if you know about it, especially to be a brand knuckle. Absolutely, guys. Well, let's give a real quick shout out to Nerd Focus Energy Drink, a major sponsor here for Game Bread Bare Knuckle. Uh, Junior, real quick question to you. Uh, viral little post from Jorge. A uh, little sign and bonus with straight cash. That's something new to the uh, fight game a little bit. Yeah, man. I thought that the fans was full of cash on top of the thing. I said, whoa, that's a nice thing. <laughs> and uh, well, yeah, I'm just very excited. You know, it's uh, Masvidal is doing with all the team is doing a great, great job on uh, Game Brad Bare Knuckle. And we are entertaining people, you know, you're here to entertain people, wants to see that, like that bare knuckle thing that's growing a lot. So uh, we are here for it, you know, to put on a good show. Absolutely. Uh, Mauricio, quick question for you. 15 years, um, you were a heavy favor. Remember that Junior was a, a rising, ascending uh, prospect. He gets the win on you. How bad did you want this rematch? Uh, you know, you get wins over Feed or you have wins over Stipe Miocic. How bad did you want this rematch? It took you 15 years, but how excited are you for this opportunity against Junior Dos Santos? Yes, I'm mean, very excited, you know, because um, not about the past, man. The past is the past, and uh, now is the present. Now, uh, this is the more important for me, and I'm very happy for everything now in my life happened. And uh, I'm happy for this fight when the guys invite me. I'm very excited. I just say, Ali, please send me the contract. I love the idea. There are no gloves. This is amazing. And this fight will be uh, the history for sure. Absolutely. All right, guys, let's open it up. Guys, by the way, tickets are on sale right now at Ticketmaster.com. Make sure you get your tickets live Friday, September 8th. Let's uh, open it up for the esteemed media. First question? There we go. Um, no, uncomparable for me. This fight to any other fight, the magnitude of this fight, these guys are both highly dangerous. And I still believe these guys are in the top five of their weight class right now in the world, you know. Um, the Roy Jones fight was was more of a, let's see what happens against a, a younger MMA guy. Um, but this fight here, I know what happens, nothing but violence, you know. It's going to end and it's going to start violent and bloody. And shit, I can't wait to see it, man. time they saw you was the night that you beat Verdum. Can you put into words what that victory meant for your entire career as it really kicked you off to become a star? Well, that was probably one of, uh, if not the most important 
part of my career. Uh, uh, yeah, it's in the second place because <laughs> uh, it's between that fight and the fight uh, I got the, the title, you know, the, those are the most important, of course, fights of my career because I, I was making my debut in the biggest show in the world, you know, U UFC, MMA show, and against uh, a legend of the, 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 the sport already, you know, a guy who was supposed to fight for the title. And I went there and I was able to get out with the victory. And that was just amazing, you know. As suddenly, uh, the, the world started to talk about, about my name. And that was something very special, you know. And like it is today, you know, to be here again, to having uh, to fight uh, Verdun again. And then finally for Verdun, um, obviously you fought many places, been part of big shows, big events. Uh, can you talk about just what does this feel like knowing, you know, it's going to be bare knuckle, it's going to be a little different than a lot of things you've done before? Yes, I want to ask, um, respond in Portuguese, okay? Just give the microphone for my translator, official translator, please. É, eu já eu lutei pelo mundo inteiro em vários eventos, né? Como eu falei antes, eu estou muito feliz de ter essa oportunidade de tantos lutadores no mundo, né? E eles me convidarem mais uma vez. Eu sei que tem uma história, mas é é muito importante, como eu falei antes, né? A, a felicidade que eu estou de poder ter essa oportunidade mais uma vez e fazer uma grande luta aí com com o cigano. Yeah, I'm very happy. Can you guys hear me? Okay. No. Yeah, I'm very happy. Um, like you said, I was fight. Uh, I had the chance to fight many places around the world, and I was invited for this uh, for this promotion. I know it's going to be a little bit different, but um, but yeah, I'm very happy for this chance to fight another, uh, another great champion. <clears throat> and I know this fight's going to be amazing. É, o que chamou atenção quando eu assinei o contrato foi ser o sem luva, né? Voltar às origens do verdadeiro vale tudo. Então isso me chamou muita atenção porque eu sempre quis lutar dessa maneira, né? Estilo estilo vale tudo, né? Sem as luvas, né? Por isso que hoje eu tenho uma uma boa proposta para o evento hoje. What kept my my attention was because of it's bare knuckle, it's the original vale tudo, and I always want to do it. So yeah, I'm I'm very excited for this fight because of that. Uh, for Junior and Fabricio, I'm curious to know who you guys think the rules here with the bare knuckle favors more obviously Fabricio you know open no gloves grappling I'm sure that helps and Junior I'm sure you know you get to hit a little harder without those gloves on so who do you guys think it favors more Junior you can go first well uh, uh, there's a, the both sides you know of the the, the, the story but uh, it's good for the, the grappling side of the fight you know it's good also as well for the the, the striking part of this the, the fight of course, you know, we for sure, the, 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 the right thing is that we're going to see much more blood. <laughs> and, you know, at the beginning, I was kind of struggling, you know, to, to really fight uh, bare knuckle and things like that. But then uh, I, I went to watch some fights and really understand what's going on, uh, you know, on this thing. And there's not, there's not many things different, you know, than the, than the, regular, the, the fight with the gloves. So the, the, big, the, the biggest difference is that uh, you got to be careful to not just break your hands. <laughs> and for sure, it's going to be much more blood. So I, I think, you know, it's a great opportunity to be fighting Verdun again. And probably it's the last time we're going to be facing each other. So why not to do on the old style, right? Eu penso que... É uma grande oportunidade de lutar sem as luvas, por isso que a minha proposta né, para o evento, nada pessoal, seria com qualquer lutador que eu faria, por ter essa felicidade de lutar mais uma vez, fazer a proposta para o Mas Vidal de fazer um antigo vale-tudo mudando a regra, se for possível, com cabeçada, pênalti, pisão na cabeça, fazer realmente o vale-tudo de verdade, já que nós... Chegamos a esse ponto né, de fazer sem as luvas, eu acho muito e acho que vai chamar muita atenção de todos os fãs para esse evento. So yeah, the, the biggest thing for me is fighting the original vale tudo, old school rules. So I would like to take this opportunity to ask Masvidal if he would agree to change the rules. And for this fight, 
we could fight with soccer kicks, uh, headbutts, and and had anything that we, we could do, we were allowed to do back those days at the original Valitude rules. The, the thing is that we'd have to change the state because of the commission, the laws. <laughs> That's the only thing. So before I could even say yes or no, we'd have to find a state that say, yeah, you could soccer kick over here. And I think the only place in America that's doing that right now is Colorado. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, somebody out there. That's correct. Any of the, yeah? <laughs> even the, the nerds agree with me, even, bro. Come on. <laughs> no, I'm fucking with y'all, bro. Listen, man, um, I wish. <laughs> We'd have to go to Japan or something like that. We'd have to leave the country. Possible. But for, for September, it'd be tight. And another one for both you guys. Um, you know, Jorge mentioned Junior that you're a free agent after this, and there's this big, you know, Francis and Ganu fight looming out there for maybe next year, and you know, big money attached. Do you feel like the winner here puts themselves in a very good position to potentially get that fight offered to them? Risa, you can go first. Yes, no, I just think about this fight now. I don't think about uh, uh, Francis and Ganu. Just uh, you know, I signed this fight now with my focus in this fight in uh, September 8. That's it. Uh, well, yeah, I think uh, yeah, whatever happens after this fight, it, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be good and it's gonna be very welcome. And but right now, it's yeah, of course, you know, I have a great fight in my in front of me. You know, a, a different style of fight that everybody's excited to see, and I'm very excited too. You know, to go there and put in a good work. And what comes afterwards comes afterwards. And just last thing for me, uh, a few minutes ago, the UFC just announced a heavyweight title fight between John Jones and uh, Stipe Miocic. I'd just like to know both of your opinions on that matchup and how do you think it's going to go? Junior? Uh, I think it's going to, I think it's a great fight. You know, that's the fight to do right now. You know, John Jones, everybody knows how amazing he is. You know, Stipe Miocic also is a great guy, you know, a great, a great fighter, actually. And, um, you know, I think, I really believe, you know, it's going to be a very interesting fight, you know, for, for the heavyweight division. And, uh, and I, you know, I also believe that Miocic has great chances, you know, to, uh, to give uh, John John some, some hard work inside, the, inside of the cage and maybe get that, that W. Real quick uh, question for Jorge. Um, can you expand maybe uh, next month or the next couple of months? Can game bread bare knuckle? Can we go to Colorado real soon? We got. We'll be closing at the show the year with three more shows. We'll be in uh, England, London in October. Then in December we'll be in Denver. Is the plan? It's a hundred nine percent on paper, yeah, but it's pretty close. And next year we'll have twelve calendar shows. That's uh, that's a for sure. And then the year after that we're going to try to move to twenty four shows in the year but next year will definitely be 12 shows in the year one show per month we're going to try to keep these guys as busy as possible once they sign on Jorge, you were talking about the state uh, athletic, athletic commission's uh, state rules before is there any specific state that you and you and the promotions have issues to allow the the bare knuckle MMA or even the bare knuckle boxing or whatever. There's a lot of states that uh, bare knuckle is still not legal. New York, Las Vegas, California, for example, some big states like that. So we we got to work around that. But there's a lot of states now, like Florida, Mississippi, Tennessee, Louisiana, Texas is soon uh, becoming. I think Arizona soon is also going to sign up for the bare knuckle. So there, there's a lot of states that are also allowing this type of competition. So I think it'll take time, but we'll get there. Like everything, you know, like when the UFC first got here, they had to go through the, the what do you call the jumps and hoops and bounds and all that. We got to do the same. You you just said that you are planning to have 12 cards next year, right? Yes, sir. So how many fighters do you, do you have already right now in the roster? In the roster right now, I would say off the top of my head, maybe like 70 guys that we have. You know, and we'll be... Now that we have a full schedule of 12 fights, now we could add a lot more to that roster because now we can tell the guys, hey, you could fight three times for us potentially next year. And so most of these fighters, that, that's that's what they want to do, is stay active, you know, one to three fights a year minimum. Por aquí una pregunta. En marzo pasado, en tu casa en Miami, vimos como te retirabas y ahora eres el que estás manejando esto. 
¿Cómo se vive los toros desde la barrera, desde afuera? Tener que organizarlo todo, ver a los peleadores, tener más responsabilidades, porque tú tienes que asegurarte que la gente haga su trabajo y funcione. ¿Cómo se vive eso? Me encanta. Es eh, la vida que he vivido mi vida entera, 20 años profesional peleando, yo entiendo el juego eh, de ser un eh, jugador del equipo para, para el partner mío, ser un training partner, estar en esquina, eh, competir yo mismo, eh, he sido referí en amateur, yo me he puesto todos los sombreros que me pueda poner en la pelea, pero eh, además de pelear, que es mi preferido y el más natural para mí, esto es la próxima cosa que, que es lo más natural en el mundo de combate para mí, que es promover las peleas. Eh, si estoy hablando con él o con Verdum o lo que sea, eh, tenemos una conexión diferente como hemos peleado, puedo hablar con ellos, ellos me pueden decir cosas que, que quieren hacer pasar y yo le puedo decir si es verdad, si lo puedo hacer, ¿no? Y, yo creo que el negocio es más fácil así. Y bueno, tengo, tengo, gracias a Dios que tengo 26, 27 años en este deporte, yo también tengo un ojo para ver quién tiene talento y no. Eso es otra bendición que Dios me dio para, para el trabajo de, de promover. Fabricio, ahora para ti, por favor. Tú eres un veterano en este deporte en, y en general en, en artes marciales mixtas y en deportes de combate. ¿Qué es lo que te, te sigue pidiendo que, que sigas peleando? ¿Qué es lo que te impulsa? a seguir peleando. Sí, yo siempre digo esto porque nací luchador, ¿entiendes? Yo sé, entonces cuando me hace una propuesta como esta, sin los guantes y después de estar dos años sin pelear porque me, por la opción que he tenido, ¿no? Entonces de verdad que me gusta bastante, como te había dicho antes, que de estar contento, ¿no? Yo creo que la gente está buscando esto, ¿no? Que de estar contento, feliz con tu vida, entonces yo estoy feliz con mi vida ahora mismo, entonces por eso acepté. Y estoy muy motivado para el 8 de, de septiembre, que va, seguramente es una, una pelea para la historia. Y Junior, tú normalmente fuiste conocido como, como un striker, uno que pegaba muy duro. ¿Tú crees que tienes ventaja para este 8 de septiembre con Fabricio o tú ves la pelea 50-50 pareja? ¿Cómo lo ves tú dentro de cuando vayas a subirte a pelear con Fabricio? Ah, por quién habla. <ríe> Yo pienso que va a ser una... una... Una buena pelea, eh, eh, Fabricio Verdun es muy experiente, tiene mucha, mucha, muy duro, en, principalmente en, lo gra en grappling, en, uh, en jiu-jitsu, sí. Mas uh, yo estoy preparado para pelear donde fue, o como en pie, o uh, en lo piso. <ríe> Entonces, uh, uh, lo, lo más importante es que vaya a ser una, una gran pelea para todos, sí. Gracias. All right, we're going to do two more guys, then we're going to have a face off, then we can have a one on ones. The Spanish interaction. Basically, he was asking us some questions about cryptocurrency in the stock market, <laughs> and um, we, for Vidisha, had a different opinion as to me and uh, JDS, so. Hopefully somebody makes a lot of money on those bets. <laughs> Jorge, just down here. Uh, you mentioned that you're going to be bringing Game Bread Boxer, Bare Knuckle Boxing, to the UK, to London. Yes, Can you elaborate a little bit about why you chose to, to bring it to London and, and do you have a main event in mind? I think there, there's, as a, it, when I was a fighter, there was places in my mind that I wanted to fight. Madison Square Garden. Um, numerous places here in Vegas, numerous arena, the Mandalay Bay, the MGM Grand. Uh, as a promoter, there's many places I, I want to promote at. In England's one of them, Brazil's one of them. Places where, where fighting is engraved in the culture. England is huge on fighting. They've been selling out arenas there for as long as I could remember. Brazil's the same thing. It's another place that's been selling out. Well, they invented the sport and they've been selling out there. So going to places like this as a promoter is 100% on the bucket list. Do you have a main event in mind at the moment? No, we were, where's, uh, where's my guy at? Where's Dean Big, at? big. Dean. The big, big Dean tour. Where you at? Oh, he disappeared. <laughs> But the main event is very close to finalists. I wanted to see if maybe I would have looked up and would have said I could announce it, you know. But um, I can't find his ass. Man. He disappeared on me. We're very close to big main event. One of the, one half of the main event is from England. Maybe that's saying too much already. But maybe within the coming weeks, we'll release it to the public already. And do you see London as somewhere that you could perhaps go quite regularly? Um, I, of course, in my heart, I'm super optimistic. I think we're going to set out and go there every year. But uh, we got to go and check. You know, we got to cross that bridge. But I think so. 
Last one, guys. Drinks are free in the back. So enjoy yourselves. Hey, thank the press for coming out. Thank all of you, man. Appreciate it. Oh, he didn't have no questions over there, man. You shy today, bro? You shy, man. You got to ask now. You shy, man. Uh huh. No, it rhymes with uh, <laughs> full whaling. Hey, this guy's fucking, <laughs> fucking move out and kick this guy out, man. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, very good guesses. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not even gonna. I'm gonna plead the fifth. I know you don't know what that means in England, but here we got this law called plead the fifth. I don't have to answer your questions. Okay. All right. Thank you guys so much. We're gonna pick up this table. We're gonna do the first ever face-off. Dos Santos and Verdum, bare knuckle. <laughs>